Hello guys, welcome back to this series which is all about fully utilizing the power of Microsoft Word to type equations and mathematics efficiently, all in Microsoft Word. So the very last video, we were talking about how to create equation environments very quickly, just like over here, utilizing the power of prefix shortcuts so that you can create equation environments like this quickly instead of going through the menus and click insert equation. If you haven't seen that yet, feel free to check it out. I'll put down the link in the description. So now that you have an equation environment, you would still need to be able to type math efficiently. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to basically the language, which is called Unicode math. So these symbols, as you can see as on-screen examples here, these are Unicode examples, a language that is very, very similar to LaTeX and allows you to just type completely marked down characters. And yet it automatically compiles or builds up into these full Unicode mathematics expressions. But if you're completely new to this and you've never used LaTeX or any other math language before, no worries, because I believe that Microsoft Word has the most simple and most intuitive language of them all. Together with the fact that it instantly compiles and instantly builds up, this makes Microsoft Word a very powerful program. For example, a fraction like this immediately compiles itself. And for those experts in LaTeX, check out my next video where I'll talk about all the LaTeX codes that Microsoft Word supports. But in this video, we're going to cover three basics, fractions, superscripts, and subscripts. And in just two minutes after this video, you'll be able to type out equations like this extremely efficiently instead of, for example, going to the menus of insert equation and then simming through all this myriad of symbols and options that makes math typing extremely slow. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the simplest of them all is starting out with just fractions and superscripts and subscripts. But as you saw above, you won't believe just the amount of equations you can already type with just three basics. Just a word of warning, I will be using my customized keyboard shortcuts to create equation environments like this. So I'll pull up my on-screen keyboard so you can follow along. However, a more complete explanation of how I set up and why I chose this particular combination for efficiency is explained in more detail in the other video with the link in the description below. So check that out if you haven't already. So let's start with fractions and fractions cannot be easier. All you have to type is A slash B and a spacebar, it will automatically compile into a very nice looking fraction. So immediately you can create some very nice looking fractions like this. And this works both in display mode or in line mode like this. Of course, when it is in an inline mode, it is much smaller and not as pretty, but there's a way to get around this, which I'll explain at the very end, to make fractions nicer in inline mode as well. Superscripts and subscripts are just as easy. All you have to do is type, for example, A and caret and another, followed by another character and space again. That will automatically compile into a superscript. And for subscripts, similarly, all you have to do is A and then underscore and a character and space. It will automatically compile into a subscript. So as you probably already guessed, spacebar is the primary key that tells Microsoft Word to compile, which is extremely efficient. You don't have to run through another program to interpret whatever linear syntax you type out into a professionally looking one. It will automatically and instantly compile as you type, which is very intuitive. Now, but what if you need something a little bit more complicated and not just one symbol on top and bottom? All you have to do is type it in series, for example, like this. And then as soon as you hit space, it will automatically group the correct characters together. And not just, for example, if I do undo, you can see that it doesn't only group the two adjacent character, but it understands how to group a whole factor together. So 4B and 2A comes together. And as soon as I move my cursor to the very end of this and hit space, it will automatically compile. And then I can write equations like this, simplifying this fraction. So just to show you this actually works with more complicated ones, say I have 15x cubed over 25x squared. Notice what happens as I keep typing and hitting spacebar and what compiles. For example, when my cursor is at this moment, if I hit space, it will compile the closest thing to my spacebar first. And then it's still not a fraction in display mode, but if I hit a second time, it will compile automatically. So let me undo just to illustrate this. So if your cursor is right over here, in total, you need to actually type two spacebar to fully compile this into a display equation. But honestly, it is so intuitive that you don't really need to think about it as you just keep typing. It basically behaves the way you expect it to be. 
So similarly, this works with superscripts and also subscripts. As soon as something is grouped into the same term, they will be automatically grouped together. However, let's say you want an even longer expression in a fraction. For example, you want, say, a plus b over c. And when you hit space, this happens instead of, for example, if you want a plus b completely on the numerator. So what can you do? Well, one way is to use your arrow keys to go back in and actually fix it like this. But of course, we don't want to do that. That is very slow. Let me undo and look at this expression. Microsoft Word can actually do the algebra. And if you look at this equation carefully as a mathematician, it did actually interpret it correctly because this is a plus b over c. So as a good mathematician, what you need is to add brackets over here. So see what happens when you compile it at the end over here. Now it's perfect. So let's see another example. Let's say you want to put a plus b at the end. So we'll do a over b plus c like this. And if you want b plus c completely on the bottom, this doesn't really quite work. So what you really need instead is a over b plus c and compile. So this is roughly like the real speed that you can type in. However, I should correct myself what I said earlier. What Word is actually doing is not actually doing the algebra, but what it is interpreting is using delimiters. So if you're familiar with some coding or spreadsheet, you know what a delimiter is. So basically when I type something like this, and let me undo over here to show you this equation, what Word does is any extra symbols that it knows it's an operator, it'll treat it as a delimiter, which means it'll cut off and only compile anything before that first. So as you saw when I typed it linearly before, let me try that again. If I just type this, as soon as I type the next symbol that is an operator, you see that it automatically compiles anything in front of it. So if I actually want a plus b on top and c plus b on the bottom, what I need is to make use of the brackets like this. And now you see everything is as you expect. I needed to clarify it is the operator that is actually splitting where it's compiling and not doing the algebra because if you think it's an algebra, you would be surprised when, for example, you do this, that it doesn't interpret it correctly. In fact, it's actually mathematically correct. Let me undo. You can see that this is actually in fact equals to this, but it's just probably not what you really want. What you really want is you want this to be on top. So as you see, I used the latex symbol of times and math actually interprets it correctly into the time symbol. Notice this also works with negative. Let me give you a few examples. So if you type minus one over two, this is what it looks like. But if you want the minus on top, you will need to type this. So the whole thing is actually very intuitive. If you try to explore it a little bit yourself, you very quickly pick up when does it compile what. And if it doesn't do something that you expect it to, just backspace and explore with it a little bit, and I'm sure you'll figure it out very quickly. And if all else fails, you can always use your arrow keys to navigate into here and fix things to make it look the way you want it to look, for example, like that. In no time, you'll get used to how Microsoft Word behaves, and you'll be able to type these equations very smoothly. So this is the basics. Let me show you a few bonus tips so you can take this to an even higher level. But before that, let me show you how just with some of these basics, you can create some very sophisticated looking expressions already. So for example, let's start with a derivative. You can do a second derivative. You can do a partial derivative. And with these, you can build even physics equations, for example, like this. As you can see, these are very simple to learn and very efficient to type. And I'll also cover that partial derivative symbol in equation 6 in the next video about latex syntax as well. Moving on, you can do probabilities. You can do combinations. And clearly, if you can do P and C, you can do tensors, for example, like this, or... Now here's an extra tip, by the way. If you need a comma, for example, in between the I and the J for the delta, 
Remember, the comma also actually acts as a delimiter. So if you actually naively just type this, as soon as you type the comma, as you see, it compiles itself and you have to go back and fiddle with it like this. So to avoid using the arrow key to backtrack, all you want is to underscore and use a bracket, J and then close bracket. So if you do this, now if I hit space, this will compile correctly. And for an extra tip, what if you actually want a bracket around these indices? For example, if you want the symmetrization of a tensor, then what you do is type two brackets. Let me show you. As you can see, now I'll actually have a bracket around my indices. If I undo, you can see this is what I typed. So the outermost bracket tells where to treat anything inside to be one single term. So finally, you can type things like Pythagoras theorem, very efficiently and if you learn more tricks you can do something even more complicated like include a vector sign in it like this let me show you two more simple examples this time let me do it without talking so you can get a sense of how in real speed it is So there you go. So that is an unedited speed. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in it or that I type extremely fast, but for me at least, it is efficient enough for most of the things I need to type. So since you have stuck around till this end of this video, let me show you a few extra bonus. Number one is typing Greek, as you've seen me type a few times already in this video. Basically, if you can spell it, you can type it. All you have to do is precede it with a slash and then the name of the Greek letter that you want to type and space. So here are a few more examples. And if you want a capital version, just capitalize the first letter. Another bonus I want to show you is these prescripts. I don't know if this is even the correct name for it, nor do I actually know what it is used for. If anyone knows in mathematics or in physics or engineering or whatever field, do let me know in the comments. I'm interested. So to type these, you would actually need a bracket in front. For example, you need R on the bottom and N on top, and then close your brackets, and then follow by whatever symbol you want. For example, let's say C this way. And there you have it. I'm sure probably these prescripts are not the proper name, but if anyone knows the proper name for these, do let me know in the comments below. Finally, if you're getting really professional, you can explore with actually different types of fraction formats. So the first one is the most simplest one that I've showed you. You just do a slash like this. Now the downside is when this is an inline equation, for example, if I start to type a text in front, this doesn't look very nice. What you really want is just a simple slash. Of course, if it is purely in line, you can probably do without the equation environment. But even in an equation environment, there are scenarios where you need it. For example, if I need to type something like this. Now clearly this is extremely ugly, so what you really want is in the middle, you just want a slash instead of an extra fraction. So what you can do is do a forward slash and then a backward slash. Or a backward slash and then a forward slash. I always get these mixed up, let me know what's the correct way. But here's how you type it. I'll try to do this in slow motion so you can see exactly how Microsoft interprets this as I, when I get to it. As you can see, when you type a normal slash, it treats it as an improper fraction. But when you type this symbol, it will treat it as a linear fraction. So this is much more useful when you have in text that you need to type, for example, 1 slash 2, like that. And if you're really advanced, you can explore the L div and S div as well. I'll just show you how it looks like, and you can see if it's useful for you. So as you can see, this makes a long division sign that is much more prettier than this one if you are in a display mode. And this one does like a slash version that is very useful if you have a much longer equation on top and bottom that you need to work with. So this is the end of this video. I want to leave you with a challenge. See if you can type this Taylor expansion equation using all the basic skills that we just learned today and try to type this in one linear sentence. So as you can see, even with these simple ingredients, you can type out pretty professionally looking equations. Next time I'll show you when you combine with LaTeX or LaTeX-like syntaxes, you can take this to a whole new level and type even more sophisticated or complicated equations to suit your needs. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and have a great day.